Are you worried that your paper might get rejected? That you're gonna spend all of this time working on collecting this data, analyzing the data, and then writing a paper, and it all just ends in a rejection? In this video, I want to walk you through three different sentences that you could write right now before you even start writing your research article that are going to tell you if your paper is likely to get rejected. These three sentences I actually write before I ever start writing a research article. And it's because it gives me a really good guide to how to write my research article and how to know if I'm missing something from the beginning that's going to cause my research article to not be as good or to potentially get rejected by a journal. The very first sentence you should write is one sentence sharing the story of your research article. And this, a lot of people I think get hung up on this because they actually don't know the story of their research article. And if you don't know the story of your research article and you write it, your research article isn't going to have a story and it's going to be far more likely to get rejected because it's not sharing a clear, concise, story with its readers. It's just an accumulation of data and you're trying to make it work. It's also going to take you a lot longer to write your research article. So for example, I'm going to kind of generate example sentences based off of this paper here. And so this paper is one that I published really early on in my career. The sentence I would come up with is something to the effect of, this paper shows that while steroid isomers can be separated as dimeric group one metal adducts, different group one metals can increase the separation of specific steroid isomer pairs. So that is a very specific storyline. Now, if we look through this, what you would see is when we get to the results, we're talking about lithium steroid adduction and we're talking about the separation of these steroids right here and specifically of lithium. And then what we do is we say, okay, lithium's really good for some of these, but as we come down, we can see that sodium is better for others and potassium is better for even others. So we talk about the resolution specifically as a function of these different adducts. How does these different adducts work as you're going at different molecular weights? Ultimately, I was able in one sentence to tell you the entire story of this paper, and that's basically what the entire paper covered. The second sentence that you need to be able to say is why is your paper different from all the other research currently out there? So for this example, I'm actually going to go to Google Scholar. We can just do steroids and eye mobility. And what I'm actually going to do is a custom range up to this paper was done. Let's say it was done in 2018 and search. So now what we see is we see a few different, okay, so this one came out because it, it's done, so let's go to 2017. So now what we see is a few different articles that come up. So what I need to be able to do is say, why is it different from all of these articles that came up? Obviously today it wouldn't be different because that paper has been published, but at the time, what I can say from looking at these articles, I need one sentence. So. A lot of these are, this one's a derivatization, which doesn't really, isn't really the same as what I'm doing. And then a lot of the rest of these are LC and IMS, LC, IMS, MS study. So this was an IMS and Lowe's study. There are two papers here that actually do group one metal adduction with steroid analysis. And so what I need to say is why am I different from these papers? So my novelty sentence would be, this study investigates how different group one metal adducts affect the separation and collision cross-section measurements of five different steroid isomer pairs. That is the first study that actually did that. This study down here looked at a single isomer pair and then followed it through multiple different adducts and then did theoretical calculations. And this study up here looked at multiple isomer pairs, but really only followed it through the sodium adduct and only looked at one isomer pair with multiple adducts. So what we did is we did a combination where we looked at multiple isomer pairs and multiple adducts within the same study. And so that's what really made this one novel um, compared to everything that 
that's out there. If you're sitting here and you can't easily define that sentence, what makes your research actually novel, that's a good indication that it's not going to get published and it's probably not even worth pursuing and researching until you can figure out what makes it novel and make sure that you're collecting it in a way that it is novel because all research really needs to be novel to get published. The third sentence that you need to have is how does your article fit your selected journal's mission? Yes, this means that you need to know your journal before you actually start writing your research article. And if you used my scientific research paper checklist, you will find that selecting your journal is really high on the list before you ever actually write your research article. If you're interested in the checklist, I will have a link in the description below. It walks you through how to write your article step by step. So yes, you need to know your selected article. You need to be able to clearly state how your article fits the mission of the journal. So for example, this one was published in the American Society for Mass Spectrometry. So I'm gonna go to Journal for American Society of Mass Spectrometry. And what we can do is go to About the Journal. In About the Journal, there's going to be an Aims and Scopes section and it covers all aspects of mass spectrometry, including fields of scientific inquiry, which mass spectrometry can play a role, including both applications and fundamentals. And this journal publishes papers both on fundamentals and application of mass spectrometry, in addition to new instrumentation and methods developed. And then papers that report on applications should have a principal focus on the use of a new mass spectrometry tool or approach to solve qualitative or quantitative problems. So how does my article fit that? First of all, you might be like, you didn't even talk about mass spectrometry. And that is accurate. IM Mobility is actually placed into certain commercial mass spectrometers. And so when we look up here and it says, which mass spectrometry can play a role, it actually does. So mass spectrometer, a mass spectrometer is our detector. So what's my one sentence? My one sentence is the inclusion of IM mobility within mass spectrometry solves the qualitative challenge of identifying steroid isomers that cannot be identified through mass spectrometry alone. This, look at how I wrote that sentence. That sentence came from pulling a lot of the components of this aims and scopes. So we talked about application, we talked about the qualitative problem, and then we, I mean, I could even talk about the environmental and forensic sciences of mass spectrometry, the omics, all of such as metabolomics, all of these words I could add into this. And guess what? This sentence that I write is going to go in my cover letter to explain why this, why this journal should publish it. So if you haven't gone to your journal's about page or your journal's author guidelines, if you don't know the mission of your journal, the scopes and the aims of that journal, then you need you shouldn't be writing yet. You should make sure that you know the journal that you're going to publish and you have a clear way to express why that journal should publish your writing. One bonus sentence that you should write is actually, why does your study matter? What is the significance of your study? So if I come back to my study, I can say something like, steroid analysis is important for medical diagnosis and forensic science. Something to the effect of why does your field even matter? Why does doing this study even matter? And so what you will notice is that sentence can actually be directly used as the very first sentence of your article. So if you look at a different article, it says steroids are an important biomolecular class for analysis due to their promise as biomarkers for various diseases and their abuse as performance enhancers in sports. So that already is an example of the importance. So you want to be able to have that sentence and then you can use that sentence over and over again whenever you're writing your abstract, your introduction, your conclusion for your article. And if you want to learn more about how to actually write your article, I will have a video up here that dives into step-by-step -step how to write your article. 